Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everyone. It's time for resilience patterns topic. I should start with some simple explanation what resilience is, maybe some colorful diagram, boring definition, or a fam qu quote from famous person. But instead of the things, me and Christopher Nolan prepared specially for you a two minutes clip. And because every second has 24 seconds, frames and when we apply, apply this simple math we will end with over three million examples of resilience. Let's check it. The enemy tanks have stopped. Why? Why waste precious tanks when they can pick us off from the air like fish in a barrel? There are 400,000 men on this beach. Kirk. I'm not going back. There's no hiding from this sun. We have a job to do. If we go, they will die. see it from here. What? Home. Developers from the British Expeditionary Force, you are here in Dunkirk and you are surrounded by the enemy. There is only one way to survive, the sea evacuation to your home country, to Dover. But we don't have enough warships and the bay is too shallow. It's time for Operation Dynamo. You need to use little ships of Dunkirk, about 850 private boats. They are ready to use, they, but they are distributed and available to you via boats API. Please use this API in a responsible and resilient way. Good luck. Hello again, my name is Tomasz Skowrenski and today I will say um, tell you more, uh, not more about uh, resilience patterns, uh, resilience components, not only how to survive on the beach or on the sea full of uh, enemy fighters or bombers, but how to survive in the world of resilience. But first we need to answer one question. Why do we need to think about resilience? Because it is enough to implement client-server architecture to end with a distributed system. Why do we need to think about uh, resilience patterns and resilience gen generally? Because even small failure can be beginning of big, long and hard chain of failures. Why do we need to think about resilience? Because as uh, developers, we often forget about error handling. And when I said error handling, uh, for me it doesn't mean um, exceptions logging or try and catch and throw them into faces of your customer. No, I think about uh, re re real uh, scenario-based error handling when it ends with some value for the customer or user. And why do we need to think about resilience? Because if some part of your system doesn't work, it doesn't mean that you should 
throw exception or provide nothing. You can provide some alternative value, something simple but still valuable for the end user. We are on, on the Java conference, so it is obvious that my examples are prepared in Java, but not in Hystrix, because Hystrix is dead. It is now more longer under active development. It is in maintenance mode. That means only security paths will be applied. But there is no problem for us because there is official successor of Hystrix named Resilience 4J. Resilience 4J is, isn't young, but is modern uh, library. It is written in functional style, but it doesn't mean because of uh, topic, because of resilience. That means uh, problem with time, latency, exceptions. Um, there is no to match place for uh, pure functions, but still Resilience4j promotes functions, dec dec decorator pattern, and it is enough to provide some functional uh, interf interface implementation to integrate with Resilience4j. Okay, so let's begin with first, probably one of the simplest pattern, time limiter. Do you know this feeling when you stay at the long queue, very long one, and think, why does it happen always only to me? If yes, probably you should think about time limiter. What is time limiter? You can think about it as if it were a timeout factor. Because with time limiter, only what you need is to transform future supplier into time limiter. But wait a moment, why do we need timeouts? I isn't timeout some kind of exception or error? There is a timeout exception in Java. Yes, it is. So why do we need timeouts factor, exceptions factory? Okay, let's imagine uh, you don't have timeouts. So you can wait and check and verify what happened if there is no timeout. But you can Wait, we can't because we don't have time. We have timeouts, you won't see the file result. So, timeouts, time limiter, uh, limits execution duration. Let's see some example. Each resilience for J component starts with configuration. You can use default one, but you shouldn't do it. Even if you know the default values, probably your, your team doesn't know them. So it is good to provide values like this 100 millis for timeout. And if you have configuration, you can build your component like this time limiter. How to add resilience for J component to your code? What you need is component like here and an implementation of expected interface or function, like this lambda. And now you can connect them using decoration. And you uh, ends with time limiter. The, the first example is trivial because uh, we limit f for 100 millis. Uh, our executions take only 42 millis. So it is natural that we ends with success. Uh, what is try? Uh, Resilience4j has only one dependency named waiver, in contrast to Hellstrix that has uh, three dependencies. But waiver isn't part of public API of Resilience4j uh, public API, but you can, like me here, use it in your code also. What is try? Try is uh, a monad like an optional, but in case of failure, it isn't empty. It contains exception, the reason of the failure. So instead of writing code like this, we don't want code like this. So instead of this, I will use in this uh, test um, try. So we, with try, we can wrap exceptions or success and verify what is inside later. And the second uh, test is similar, that means, but the time is longer, so it is obvious that uh, there is no success at the end. 
Okay, now it's time for red limiter. This time it is also about time, but now time has different meaning. Because red limiter uh, doesn't limit the duration, but the number of executions in per some time window. So you can think about it as if it were a throttling factory. What throttling is? Let's look at the picture. Uh, on the first plan, there are blue lines, and you can see that there is no limit. That means limit is related only to your for uh, depends only on your infrastructure or credit card if you use cloud. And if you apply throttling, you can see green lines. That is limit uh, thousand executions per second. And with rate limiter, you can provide um, throttling not on your endpoints, but on uh, your clients of other services. Let's see it in the practice. This time it is more complex. We still need to begin with configuration. So we allow to, to uh, okay, our time window has two seconds. We allow to one executions per time window, and that's all. Uh, and what we need is to decorate our uh, business logic. It isn't too complex, but still, it is our business logic. We need to decorate our logic with created before red limiter. And let's look here. Now it is more interesting than uh, in case of time limiter because with Resilience 4J, you can decorate almost everything. That means it promotes uh, functional interfaces like runnable, callable, function, supplier, or even future. So you can um, decorate almost everything. And what is interesting, of, of course, because uh, functional interfaces, you don't need to implement it, uh, implement this uh, in interface. You can provide a uh, method reference or even Lambda. In this case, this is a runnable implementation. And the first uh, result is obvious because we have two tries and we allow to let's look to our definition, uh, to our configuration, we allow for two calls per time windows, uh, or only one, sorry. So it isn't surprised that second uh, executions is failed. More interesting is second example, because this is there is al uh, almost the same configuration. There are also two tries, and both are successes. Why is, the p is it, it possible? Because in our configuration, there is something like timeout duration. Instead of rejection, like in the first test, uh, more calls, instead of that, we delay them. And you can look here, the second call, even they started almost at the same time, the second call was delayed two seconds because of this timeout. So it makes sense. If our client has a time, uh, it won't be rejected, only delayed. Retry. Retry is also a pattern, probably the most popular, and we often forget about uh, that, that it is a uh, resilience pattern. What, it, uh, what does it do? Of course, it repeats failed execution, so if, there if the first call is successful, there is no retries, but in other case, there are uh, repeats. Uh, what is interesting here? We have our server. Uh, we use uh, Wiremock to mock this HTTP endpoint. Uh, we create our boats API and our retry. We allow to max three attempts. Uh, and here we can provide interval functions. Interval functions is a function that uh, ge uh, get um, number of attempts as an uh, argument and return time between each uh, repeat. As a default, what is surprise, it is a uh, constant time, but probably you should think about something like expansional backoff. That means uh, the, the interval between each call will be twice more uh, in generally, but you can provide 
you can choose any um, other function, maybe something more random, or because it is resilience for J, you can provide custom function, of course. So you can, for example, load them from other service. And what is interesting in resilience for J, your uh, retry can be more smart, smarter. That means you can provide uh, some filters, some predicates. What should be retried? For example, if there is here, we have uh, conditionals. That means uh, we retry only if there is too many requests or if it is a server failure. Why? Because if you receive 400 something, that means it is your fault, like bad request or not found, it, it, it shouldn't be requested. So it makes sense. And we here we mock our, we mock our uh, server. If uh, the path ends with 500, it will uh, serve server error. If paths, path uh, ends with 400, there will be bad requ request. So in first uh, example, here you see what retry means. There is only one call to our backend, but because it is de decorated with uh, retry, you can see that uh, three calls reached our backend because there were only failures. And this ex example is more interesting. You can see there is still, there is still one call Still, there is error, but because uh, we have some conditions on our retry, there are no more retry. 400 means bad request that you, don't, you shouldn't retry it. And here is an interesting example. Uh, some simple version of fallback pattern uh, from Waver. It isn't uh, from Resilience4j. You can see that even there was an error, uh, our result isn't null, and we at the end we finish with some dummy boat because of this fallback. Bucket is my favorite pattern. What does it do? Uh, you can think about it as, uh, as if it were uh, some kind of uh, resource pool protection. Uh, it also limits uh, calls per some period, but this period has zero time length. That means bulkhead uh, protect uh, bulkhead limits executions at the same time. What does uh, bulkhead means? There is a ship without bulkhead, and here is bulkhead. That means bulkhead are bulkhead is this uh, inside wall and it par is allowed to partial protection. Okay. Now, a longer and more complex example. Please imagine this situation. One boat, 20 people, and only four paddles this summer. And now the same for people without imagination. Explain it. Explain it we're using the code. We have our configuration for men, uh, sorry, for paddles, 20 people, one boat. We have two methods. That means paddle now, when somebody, uh, when s somebody try to get paddles from the resource pool, use them for 100 mellies and return to the pool. And we have method everybody in the boat, where we crea create 20 threads starts them at the same time, and let's see what happened. In first NAV scenario, there is no limitations. So you can see that even, we ha even if we have only four puddles, there were 20 threads, and everybody tried to use puddles. So the number of available puddles which should be between 0 and 4, often is below 0. It doesn't make sense. So maybe we can limit in some way this behavior. Let's synchronize our paddle now method using synchronize, uh, synchronize keyword. 
what will happen. Oh, there are still 20 different threads and some of them try slip. You shouldn't do it in the boat full of 20 unknown people. Uh, and what is more interesting, the number of available paddles is always free. Why? Because we synchronize this me method so only one paddle can, can be used at the uh, same time. It isn't solution for our problem. So maybe we can use bulkhead. Like in Hystrix, in Resilience 4J there are two isolation uh, strategies. That means thread pool and semaphore based. So we use first of them. Here you can see that even if we created 20 threads in our first me method, only four of them, here there are only four different threads, are allowed to uh, access our resor paddles resources. And the number of available paddles is between zero and four, what like in real life. So it is good, but still they are a lot of unnecessary tries. Why? Because uh, Threadpool bulkhead use uh, thread pool in under the hood, so there is a queue, and we can we can decrease the size of this queue. But still, there is one more unnecessary call because the one is the smallest value, possible value. But we can use semaphore-based bulkhead, and it is the answer for our problem. So. Even we, if we create 20 different threads, only four of them are allowed to uh, access our resources. Fallback is a very popular pattern, also simple. Uh, you can imagine this situation. Sometimes it is better to receive both, even it it can't swim, but maybe more realistic uh, case. Uh, let's imagine you are VOD platform like HBO Go and some part of your system doesn't work. Then nothing works, so it was a very bad example. But let's imagine you are another VOD platform like Netflix and for example, your recommendation system doesn't work. So instead of uh, disabling this uh, functionality, you can provide some fallback and, for example, display the most popular movies because you can't provide uh, recommendations. Uh, I would like to show you uh, Fane Decorators that is part of uh, Resilience 4J. What is Fane? If you know uh, Retrofit, Fane is similar. That means it allows to uh, uh, declarative declaration of uh, HTTP client and with fine decorators you don't need to uh, decorate every method from this API you can decorate all API how does it look in practice Okay, so here is definition of our fallback in the configuration. Uh, normally, using Fane, you need to do something like this. That means uh, choose decoder and encoder and target your uh, interface. And Fane or Retrofit will create HTTP client from this interface using this these annotations. And that it's all you have a uh, powerful HTTP client. Uh, with Fane decorators, you can provide some alternative implementation because first one is generated by Fane. So you pro can provide alternative uh, implementation. And there are some uh, fallback values. So somebody decide that empty list is better than exception or some dummy boat like this life raft is better than uh, null or uh, exception or batteries or, or error in response. 
and again uh, we decide here that we will provide uh, fallback only in case of server error nor not client errors so here you can see that even we try to retrie uh, retrieve an uh, not existing boat we will end with our dummy uh, boat, our fallback. There are more integrations in Resilience 4J, so even you don't like uh, functional interfaces or decoration pattern, and you prefer uh, some uh, aspect-oriented programming, reflections, that means your favorite dependency injection library, you can uh, use annotations. You can also integrate with other libraries uh, or frameworks like frameworks. If you use uh, reactive programming, uh, Resilience 4J provides some uh, operators. And there is a lot of integration with metrics because metrics are very important in context of a resilience topic. If you heard about Helstrix, you have to heard about circuit breaker. It is also available in uh, Resilience 4J. Uh, what does it do? Uh, you can think about it as uh, if it were a cache of failures or some opposite of retry because uh, circuit breaker disable your client access to the dependency or some service. Do you remember this logo? It is not only a logo of Resilience 4J, but it is also a, a finite state machine diagram of a circuit breaker. Just remember three words, close, open, and half open. And now I will explain it using prepared example. So again, we have our MOX server, our FAIN uh, Boats API, and what do we do here? Our server will always respond with server error. So we create some circuit, circuit breaker configuration. Mm, I will back uh, later to these values. And we also uh, capture all emitted events because each uh, Resilience 4J component uh, not only provides some resilience future, uh, function, future uh, feature, but also uh, emits events and allow uh, and uh, metrics. So we can, for example, collect them and verify in test like here. And uh, when we have our circuit breaker created, we can decorate it with, we can decorate our boats API. Uh, we will try to get our boats uh, 10 times, then there is some break and again four calls. And what will happen? Because we collected our uh, events, we don't need to browse uh, logs. We can verify it here in assertions. Uh, so there were, there were 10 uh, calls to our API. And because the mock always responds with uh, failure uh, with server error, all of them are errors, but our circuit breaker has size 4 for ring buffer in closed state. That means uh, when this buffer is full, that means here, uh, our circuit breaker can decide, do I have enough knowledge to decide to switch to other another state? Yes, because the size is 4. And were there more errors than some threshold? Default value was 50%, uh, so that the answer is true because there were only errors. So now our circuit breaker uh, goes from closed to open state. Open state means that circuit breaker is open and it doesn't allow to any um, communication with service like this, uh, like, like our API. And next six calls are not permitted 
That means uh, now our backend or another service ha has time to recover. Maybe server should be restarted. Maybe uh, some another machine uh, in cloud will be uh, started. And we don't have timeouts. We have uh, after call, we have immediately response so uh, that uh, there is not permitted access. And after some time, our two seconds, uh, our 100 millis, uh, our circuit breaker switch to have op open uh, state. And in this state, it allow to some uh, checks. In Hastrix, there is one check. Here you can configure it, like here there are two checks. And after two checks, uh, the communication is allowed because it is half open state. But again, because uh, our server doesn't work, next calls are not permitted. And that is all in case of service uh, circuit breaker. There were 14 calls, but only six of them reach our API. Cache is important part also of resilience because uh, if you have uh, some independent method, uh, you don't need to access probably it again uh, in s short time. Uh, resilience for it doesn't uh, provide custom cache. It integrates with jcache. That means if you use uh, implementation of this, uh, you can you can use it also in resilience for j. Uh, now I would like to show you not cache usage, but how to connect more patterns, because you can do it, and there are uh, a few different ways. So you can write code like this. That means create uh, retry, wrap, decorate with circuit breaker, and decorate with cache. But it isn't uh, too readable. Too mm, there is not too, too good readability. So you can do it in this way. That means we have our API. We decorate if retry and we decorate this retry with circuit breaker. It is more clean, more clear, but still there are some unnecessary private uh, variables, so it isn't best. Uh, you can also use, because uh, it is um, resilience for j and it promotes functions, so you can uh, use compositions, like here. That means uh, you decorate our get with retry, then we decorate it with circuit break and, and cache, and we use this a cache key. Or you can use uh, this some kind of helper like uh, builders for more pat components, decorators, and it is probably the, 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 the cleanest way. Uh, uh, okay, and some explanation what will happen here. Uh, we decorate with uh, retry with circuit break and, and cache, but the order of executions is in reverse order. That means first, when we call our get boats, uh, when we call our get boats, first uh, we access our cache. If there is no uh, value, we access our circuit breaker. And as, uh, as you remember, there were three states. So if uh, it is closed state, we can go uh, here, and we access our uh, retry. And if it is success, there is only y and one call. If no, there are more calls. Like here, our there were two calls, but in reality there were six calls because of this retry. Okay, so you can think that. Mm, Resilience patterns are simple. They are, especially if we compare them with uh, Dunkirk evacuation or Dunkirk nightmare. Uh, what I showed you, there were the simplest one, and the because there are more patterns, 
Uh, what I showed you were, pa uh, were patterns or components uh, that best match to code base level. That means you can add uh, some dependency like resilience for j or if you work for a bank and have too many developers, you can write something, something um, from scratch. But still there are more patterns and what is interesting, uh, most of them um, are more use is more useful on other higher levels of your system, like um, service mesh or API gateway, or uh, even con container Docker containers, or even a cloud provider like Elastic uh, Load Balancer from AWS. What should you remember from this talk? Maybe nothing from this list, but it is good to know that the length of the smallest boat used during the evacuation uh, was just fi uh, five meters. So what should you remember from this talk? First, don't apply every pattern, especially in wrong order. First, uh, first, uh, it is similar situation like uh, classic design patterns that uh, if you read all book, it doesn't mean that you need to apply all patterns in one uh, code base. And wrong order can be worse than, uh, no, than uh, when, when then you don't use these patterns. Don't decorate everything, not only because you can use annotations, but again, because sometimes it is better to fast file then uh, then 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 fail safe sometimes it is better to see that something doesn't work not from metrics or from logs but from ui you can't provide for example fallbacks in each uh, use case and use metrics not only because with resilience for they they are for free and not only for colorful dashboards but because you need to tune your configuration you don't, at the beginning, you don't know the best value for your production. And even my examples were related to HTTP client. You remember this Bolts API. It doesn't mean that resilience is only problem of HTTP or network in general. It apply, you can apply it always when uh, there is some stateful uh, behavior like file system, like threads, time or network, everything what is unpredict unpredictable can be wrapped with resilience uh, support. And that is generally all from me. Thank you for your attention. Uh, there are some actions, action buttons for you. Uh, just two words at the end. Forget about agile, be resilient. Thank you.